Hello class, welcome to General Chemistry with me, Mr. Lim, and today's topic of study is going to be on pH, also known as the power of hydrogen. Now today's learning objectives are going to be the following. First, by the end of the lesson, you should be able to define what is pH. Second, what is the hydrogen ion concentration, H plus, that's bracketed. Third, what is a hydrogen bond? And why is it called an intermolecular force rather than an intramolecular force? Fourthly, what is the pH of an acid versus the pH of a base? Fifth, the pH equation, which equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And finally, why is pH relevant to not only our bodies, but our world today? So let's get started. My topic of study growing up was actually biology. And one of the main tenets or rules of biology is that proteins function best at a specific pH. Now, if I were to make an example of this, let's say that you are like a protein and I crank up the temperature of the classroom to say 100 degrees Fahrenheit. How would you begin to react? Well, I don't think you'd be learning. You probably would be unraveling. You wouldn't be able to think at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Proteins follow a very similar rule to this. If they're at too high of a specific condition like pH or temperature, they'll begin to unravel just like you would unravel. But there are specific conditions or specific pH, for example, where the protein will act at its very, very best. And we call this the optimal zone. So as you can see here, myoglobin is the image of the little molecule right above me. That's a protein, and it's a specific protein that's found in your muscles. Myoglobin actually functions at a slightly acidic pH, a pH of 6. And it's at this specific range that it will function its very, very best. If you start to increase the pH or decrease the pH too much, you're going to start to get very, very little function from the protein. It's going to unravel. It's not going to be able to do its job. So let's talk about why this happens. In order to understand pH or the power of hydrogen, we need to understand the water molecule itself. So we have a picture here of a water molecule to my top corner right here. You can see that there are two hydrogens and one oxygen, also known as H2O, as you might more commonly know it. Now, the question might be, why is there a plus side towards the hydrogens and then a minus side more towards the oxygens? That's a great question. So if you remember, there are nucleuses. Nucleuses are made up of protons that have positive charge. These positive charges are going to be stronger in the oxygen simply because there are more protons in oxygen than there is in hydrogen. Why is this important? If you remember, a cell has electrons that surround its uh, nucleus. It's going to pull the the one with the more protons is going to pull more electrons to itself. So the bond between hydrogen and oxygen right here is actually going to be called a polar covalent bond. That is, it's going to share electrons and oxygen is going to hold on to the electrons a bit more than the hydrogen will. That's why you see this polarity, this difference between the positive and negative side of this water molecule. Now, what happens when you begin to interact multiple water molecules with one another? You begin to see a phenomenon called hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular force. An intermolecular force means it's between two molecules. So you can see here, the positive side towards the hydrogen is going to connect with the negative side of an adjacent water molecule, the oxygen side. Positive and negative are going to attract with one another. Don't mistake it though, if you look right here, this bond right here between the oxygen and hydrogen of the same molecule is called an intramolecular force, and that is a polar covalent bond. It is not a hydrogen bond. Remember, hydrogen bonds are between two different water molecules. So now that we've established hydrogen bonding, there are times when the hydrogen bond becomes so powerful, it becomes powerful enough 
to grab an entire hydrogen and keep it for itself. Essentially jumping from one water molecule to another water molecule here. And you can see what's formed. You see in the red, hydronium ion formed, H3O plus, there's an extra hydrogen there, and then a hydroxide ion formed with a minus sign or a negative charge. Now this is essential to know. So in a solution, there statistically can sometimes be the formation of either hydronium ions or free floating hydrogen ions. In all terms right now, they equal the same thing for our equation. So why is this important? Sometimes in a, water, in a watery solution, in an aqueous solution, there will be a bunch of water molecules and one in 10 millionth of the chance of a time, it's gonna automatically self auto ionize or automatically form a hydronium ion. Out of these 10 million water molecules, you'll get one hydronium ion that just spontaneously forms. Now we can rewrite one in 10 million in scientific notation. One times 10 to the negative seven. Now we get to this equation here. Please don't be intimidated. You will get a scientific graphing calculator during your tests. Now pH or the power of hydrogen is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Now, what was the hydrogen ion concentration that we just found? for a neutral solution is gonna be one in 10 millions chance. So out of 10 million water molecules, one of them will automatically turn into a hydronium ion or a free floating hydrogen ion. If we rewrite this in scientific notation, this should equal negative log of one times 10 to the negative seven. And if you plug this into your calculator, it should come up with a nice round single number, the number seven. And here we have pH equal to seven is actually the pH of a neutral solution. So it's neither basic nor acidic. But now let's talk about acids and bases and why they're important. We'll start off first with acids. The most, one of the most common forms of acids, it's called hydrochloric acid, also known as stomach acid. Now stomach acid, when it's formed in an aqueous, when it's put into a watery aqueous solution, it'll break apart, also known as the word dissociate from one another. When it dissociates, you see this free floating hydrogen ion there. What does that mean? That means you've suddenly increased the chances that within every 100 water molecules, instead of 10 million water molecules, you'll get one hydrogen ion that will spontaneously form amidst 100 different water molecules. So if we rewrite this in scientific notation, pH equals the negative log of one times 10 to the negative two. And if you plug that into your calculator, it should come out with the round number two. So notice as you increase the number of hydrogen ions, it'll make the pH go down. And that means it's more acidic. Now we have bases. A very common example of a base is called sodium hydroxide. If you throw sodium hydroxide into water, it'll automatically, again, dissociate. You'll have a sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. The hydroxide ion is very interesting. The hydroxide ion has the tendency to want to gobble up hydrogen ions that are just free floating in the solution. So what happens after that is the formation of water. Now what happens if you have more of hydroxide ions free floating inside of a solution? Well, any hydrogen ion that float, floats around will get eaten up by these hydroxide ions. So now there's less of a likelihood that there will be free floating hydrogen ions in the solution. So now our statistical likelihood is gonna go from one in 10 million in a neutral solution or one times 10 to negative seven and become even more unlikely one times 10 to the negative 12, or one in a trillion chance that there's gonna be a free floating hydrogen ion. If you plug this into your calculator, your pH will equal 12. Now, as you can see here, let's review that really quickly. The more hydrogen ions there are in the solution, the more acidic the solution is. 
the less hydrogen ions there are in solution, the more basic the solution is. So more hydrogen ions, it's going to be more acidic, which is going to make for a smaller pH or less than 7, versus a base, which is going to be less hydrogens in the ion solution, and then it's going to increase the pH. So make sure you keep that in mind. That could be a little tricky for, for some. Now, why is this important? Well, with the phenomena of global warming today, we find that there's an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide that's in the environment. And this is important. Naturally, what will begin to happen is CO2 or carbon dioxide will uh, bond together with water and form something called carbonic acid, which is placed right above me. You can see there, there's H2CO3. Those hydrogen ions, those hydrogens will automatically fall off the carbonic acid and form more hydrogen ions in water. And you can see here with the image to my, uh, to my left right here that there are statues that are getting disfigured and we're losing uh, artifacts from civilization because of the effect of too much acid inside the water. This is also a phenomenon called acid rain which means that the acidity of rain is actually stripping down our forests and stripping down all the life and greenery from these trees. And finally, there's even the acidification of our oceans with the increase of CO2. It increases the amount of carbonic acid and the increase in the amount of carbonic acid is actually causing the mass extinction of some coral reefs. So you did it, you made it to the end of the lesson. So let's review all the concepts that we just learned and that you should be responsible for now. pH is defined as the power of hydrogen. How many hydrogens are there in the solution? That's also called the hydrogen ion concentration. Remember, the hydrogen bond is the bond between two different water molecules and not the polar covalent bond within the molecule. Next, the pH of acids are less than 7, the pH of bases are greater than 7, the pH equation equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, and finally, this is very important for understanding how our proteins in our body have a narrow range of a pH optimization level versus uh, also acid rain and the effects of acid rain and why it's detrimental to our uh, earth today. All right, so your assignment should be uploaded to Canvas within the next 24 hours. I really miss you guys, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys soon.